Hey, what's going on? Today we're going to look at using the MIDI Fighter Twister to manipulate Drambo. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to map yet in this project. We'll go through it together. I do know we're definitely going to map that crossfader. Hey, this is me from the future. We've got everything mapped. And I want to show you just a real quick performance of what we can do with this. Hey guys, I decided just to link back to my previous video where I get into the MIDI fighter utility because that'll be pretty much the same as what we're doing here. That'll be down in the description. Um, I'm down here in what will soon be my first dedicated studio. My girlfriend and I are building this room. We're actually finishing the whole basement. So it's been a project, but um, definitely it's going to be a cool spot and when this is done most of the videos are going to be shot down here uh, all my production recording rehearsals i'm just going to basically live down here my family will never see me again so last night when i was in bed i was playing with drambo on my phone and i just wanted to see what i could come up with with some of the factory presets and sounds and this project here is what i came up with so for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to get too deep, but I'll go through some basic mappings that you might want to try. In Drambo, the first thing you do to MIDI map is touch the little circle with two dots in it right there. You'll see everything turn blue. Basically, anything that turns blue is MIDI mappable. For sure, the first thing I want to map is my crossfader. So whatever you want to map, you just go ahead and touch it, and it turns orange. So there we go. And I already know which knob I have in mind to map to this crossfader, which is this one here. I'll go ahead and wiggle it. And nothing happens. Let's back out of MIDI mapping. Let's go up to the gear icon. Now, for context, I have this hosted inside Loopy Pro. We have to tell Drambo which MIDI source to listen to. We go to here and we add MIDI source. And there we see MIDI Fighter Twister. Go ahead and tap it. Now, let's go back in. Try that mapping again for the crossfader. And there we go. Let's just back out a mapping just to test it. Wiggle my knob. Cool. That's a beautiful thing right there. And now that this is something I talked about in my last video. I like to have some of these encoders set up to uh, return to zero when you push them in. And that's what I have on this one. So if you if you watch my crossfader go all the way over to B, and then I push in on the knob, it goes to zero. So if I want to snap back to my A scene, I can do that really quickly. 
In regards to scenes, what else might we want to map? We would want to be able to select which scene we want active. So let's go back into mapping again. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it simple. So we'll just do our A, B, and C scenes. So we'll touch A here. I already have three knobs in mind, um, encoders rather. And we're going to make these um, push encoders. So I push down. I have these push encoders set up to send CC messages on push. So the next one, we'll map it. And the next one. There we go. Take it out of MIDI Learn and just test those. So you can see, for example, let's go over to scene B and I can change between two different scenes I have set up over there, B and C, with these two encoders. You can, you can see it. It's kind of hard to see on the screen, but in the active scene button, you can see it change from B to C. And you can also see all my parameters changing. So something else we might want to map is in the mixer page. In the mixer page, we could map our mutes, which would be definitely be very useful. So let's go into MIDI map. Go to go to track one. We're going to touch our mute button. Push my top encoder. I want my first two rows of encoders to be mutes. So we're going to go ahead and push the first one. There we go. Move to the next track. Next track. Next track. Next track. Next track. Whoops. Next track. Next track. So now we test these, these should be controlling our mutes. If you want to change something that you've MIDI mapped, you just tap on it and you'll have the option here to unmap that. And you can also get into some specifics on, on the range of motion. You can get into some spiff, some, you can get into some specifics on the control type um, range. You can get into some specifics like the control type, the range. You can actually manually set up these mappings if you prefer. So another thing you could do, you could either set, um, you could set these encoders up that are already set up as mutes on the push action. You could set the rotary encoder action to control something else like um, maybe your sends or your volume for each track. What I would like to eventually do is have a DJ filter on each track and have each of these set up to work with that DJ filter so I can either cut out all the lows or cut out all the highs for each track. Since we're in Loopy Pro, I'll show you guys something else I like to set up. We're gonna go over to MIDI Control, Main Profile. Add new binding at the bottom. Under audio source actions, we want to open audio unit interface. Go to target, drambo, action, toggle. As always, we go back one. And then I have an encoder here I'd like to use. I'm going to go ahead and push that. There it is. It picked that up. I'm going to save it. And what this should do is open and close Drambo's interface for us. So that's really cool to be able to jump over from your main screen in Loopy Pro directly to see what's happening in Drambo.
forget to like and subscribe, motherfucker!